You know, it's not always working harder or more. It's trying to be better. You know, because more is more, better is better, but more is not always better. When I started in September of 1974 was uh, typing one and two, accounting and shorthand. Of course, when I talk to some of former students, they don't remember less than this or less than that, but they remember jokes or something funny that happened, you know. And it's amazing what students, when they come back and you see them, it's amazing what they tell you they remember about your class. One day, one child was leaning back on his chair and he started falling back in slow motion, you know. And you see his eyes get big and he's going back like this and he falls, boom, right on the floor and everybody, you know, gasps and looks at him. So I run up to him and I check and see if he's okay. And I say, safe! Because he's, he played baseball, you know. So he's like, whoa, 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 boom, and I ran out. And he still remembers that. He still remembers that. I started coaching uh, varsity baseball with Coach Pal Eldridge. And then, uh, I, then I coached JV baseball for a few years then back on the varsity with Coach Pal. And then in 86, I started coaching intermediate baseball. And then back to the JV for a couple of years and then back to intermediate baseball. I think I was pretty strict, uh, pretty demanding. And uh, I like to focus on fundamentals. You know, nothing fancy. We used to call it straight vanilla. And just straight vanilla, do the basics because you know, like any sport, if you can execute the fundamentals well and do things technically correct, you have a good chance of success. You know, when we get to a field, I always tell the boys, you know, straighten out the dugout, put your things where you know it is. You know, one of the worst things is a guy say, where's my glove, where's my hat, where's my bat? After the game or after practice, we always used to count the balls in the ball bucket. Make sure we got what we started with. And uh, if anything's missing, I used to make the kids go and find it. And if they couldn't find it, then I said, well, you guys are responsible. And so bring in a couple balls tomorrow from your ball bucket at home. Because some kids used to take the nice balls and take them home. So they'd try to, you know, to snitch balls from the ball bucket. I thought, no, you replace it. Some of the kids might remember me for doing that, and some of the coaches might too, but I think, uh, you know, I was pretty strict, try to be conscientious, and I wanted the kids to be responsible and conscientious too. You know? Music has been a big part of my life from when I was in high school. My neighbor and I went to the same high school, University High School. He played the guitar, and I didn't know how to play very well, uh, ukulele, a little bit, but we'd sing. We had so much fun just singing songs, you know, folk song, Peter, Paul, and Mary, Bob Dylan at that time, Kingston Trio. Over the years, I started playing melee with the third graders, play with Mr. Eldridge at Mayday and help at Holoku. And then when the pandemic came, you know, everything shut down, all that stopped. Before the pandemic, we started playing with uh, a couple of Punahou alumnus and myself, former faculty, and we just get together and play music, all kinds. Hawaiian music, folk music, uh, rock and roll, songs from the 50s, 60s, country music, and it's just a lot of fun. I've had a great opportunity teaching here at Punahou for, and working here at Puno for over 40 years. And what that's allowed me to do is to see people grow from when they were kindergarten, through high school, through their college years, and now in their daily lives, you know. They were good kids then, and they're still good people now. And that's the neat part. A good example of a student that we had was uh, uh, President Obama. Uh, I was fortunate to have him in our home in our homeroom from 
September of 75 until June of 79, so four years. And at that time, the academy was every day, every morning, eight o'clock. And then one day out of the cycle, we were allowed to do things together. We'd have picnics, Halloween parties, and we'd have Christmas parties, celebrate birthdays, have donuts and stuff like that. After he graduated, I didn't see him for over 25 years. And then he came back to speak at chapel about community service. And uh, I saw Dr. Scott, the president at that time of Punahou, and he said, oh, did you see Barry Obama? I said, no, I didn't. He said, oh, he was asking about you. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, if, he asked if you're still here. I said, oh, I didn't know he'd remember me. That was nice that he remembered us. He remembered all of his teachers, Mr. Eldridge, myself. Uh, he remembered his classmates, his teammates. And that, that, that told me a lot about him. You know, he never forgets Hawaii. That's just an example, a big example of being able to work with students here, you know, and bumping into them. It's really gratifying that you bump into them, you talk to them, you, you find out how they're doing, and you're happy for them because they're, all, they're doing well and they're still the same good people. A teacher's satisfaction is not in the money you make, but in the lives that you touch and the lives that touch you. And that's been very, very gratifying for me.